What's up, everybody? Revival House Network here with the BTM Podcast. We're going to do a commentary for Stephen King's Children of the Corn. Children of the fucking corn, motherfucker! It's crazy! We've talked about this one a lot, but only because we reference uh, the ginger, the outlander kid. <laughs> we, do, we, we reference that guy all the time. Uh, I don't know. I like this movie. This is one of those movies where I, I don't know if it's a great movie, but it's a good little movie. I like it. Yeah. I know a lot of fucking horror fans don't like it. It's a very simple story. Like, to me, it's the kind of thing that would have worked just as well as, like, uh, like on Twilight Zone or something, right? Mm-hmm. You could you could have shrank it down to 45 minutes to an hour, and it'd be just fine. Um, but, obviously, they... Well, it actually came from a short story, too, so... Mm-hmm. Okay, so Stephen King's Children of the Corn. We're watching on Netflix, so you guys can follow along. There's no excuse not to. Uh, we're just going to jump right into it, and we'll start jibber-jabbering away. Uh, you ready, Zach? I smell it. All right. Oh, man, I kind of wish I could do Malachi's fucking voice. I'd do a 3 2 one Outlander! We're going to start the movie <laughs> in three, two, one, play! Outlander, are you hear me? It's playing now! We're seeing an image entertainment logo, Outlander! He who walks behind the rose. He who walks behind the rose. You ever fucked with he who walks behind the rose? You know, I think the first one I ever saw was probably actually part three. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I remember watching part three in, I think it came out like 95, 96. That was one of those movies that I rented at that video shop when I lived in my grandmother's house, that haunted house, you know? I think that was the last one to go to video uh, to theaters. It had uh, Eva Mendez in a very, very small part. You think that would have came out straight to video? Yeah, I really would have. Well, horror <laughs> was kind of in a weird place in the in the the pre well the mid nineties or pre Scream days, mm-hmm. like just before Scream, because they were still putting movies like I don't know, like Leprechaun Two would be in the theaters, right? Wasn't that in theaters? Maybe, yeah. And then they'd have like. Hellraiser, like Hellraiser three, would be in theater. These movies that you don't think they'd even waste uh, marketing space on. Mm-hmm. Naomi Watts was in Children of the Corn four. Yeah, and I, I can't remember if I've seen that one or not, or if I've just seen it's them. So fucking forgettable. I can watch it and forget I watched it the next day. It's nothing happens pretty much. I've seen three. I've seen this one probably the most. I've seen three the second most. I can't remember if I've seen part two or not. Part two is one of those so bad it's good movies to a lot of people. It ca- it finally came out on like DVD, just not even that long ago. It, like Mill Creek finally put it out. Nobody else will touch it. It just looked like a VHS transfer. <laughs> Did it also have uh, the same little weird midget kid? Yeah, he was he was in like I know he he only showed up he showed up in part six. Yeah, six, six, corn, six, 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 yeah. Yeah. And they did a fucking uh, a whole South Park episode like based on this movie. It's cool. It's a creepy setting, man. Uh this is one of the odd Stephen King stories that's not set in the, you know, Pacific Northeast. It's it takes place in Nebraska, small town, cornfields. There's something creepy about it, man. There's that little fuck. Yeah, he's I just want a nut in his face. <laughs> His name's Courtney, by the way. He's got it coming, then. Ah, <laughs> oh, thanks. I'm gonna eat the fuck out this shake. <laughs> fuck this shake. It looks good. Look at this old diner's wallpaper. You remember when everything was decorated in wallpaper? Mm-hmm. What a weird fucking fad. I guess it was around for a while, but my grandparents used to have wallpaper in their house. I used to, when I used to take a shit, in my grandmother's one of her bathrooms, they had this wallpaper dec- decor that was like old newspaper clippings, you know, with mm-hmm. old articles and shit, just from like the night, like the turn of the 20th century. And I remember I used to, I used to poop and I used to read all the little articles in the wall, and I actually liked it. I'm like, this is a cool idea. I remember when I was a kid, the idea of reading the paper struck me as like that's when you know you're a grown up is when you have the urge to read the paper, and I still don't got it. And when I do pick up the paper, I I just get pissed because it's like, why the fuck don't they staple this shit? 
It's just falling all over the place. I can't open this up without it falling apart. Fuck yeah. them. They ain't even gonna staple it like a real book. Then fuck them. And it's annoying too because it, it, all the pages are ordered a certain way. So when the innings fall out, you're going from page one to fucking fourteen. And uh, or you got to start an article. You'll you'll read something and you'll you'll be into the article and be like, hey, turn to page fucking fifteen to finish this article. I'm like, why do I gotta turn ten pages to finish this article? Exactly. Stupid. It's annoying. And you can't just simply turn it. You got to fucking, you got to set it down on the table and carefully turn it so that it don't fall apart. A newspaper can kiss my fucking dick. That's what it can do. Yeah, this seems pretty brutal, actually. So would you fuck that little midget? Oh, absolutely not. I would fucking rub my cock on his lips. <laughs> like lipstick? Like give him, <laughs> yeah. give him a, pre, a pre-cum, uh... Like, like you Lip ever bomb? do that with a dog's dick? No. A dog's dick looks like lipstick, so it's perfect for that. Yeah, it's actually, I mean, it's weird how, like, um, back in, back in the eighties and seventies and stuff like that. I mean, they didn't, they never showed a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like even this, they just got slaughtered. And it was still pretty brutal, but they don't actually show a lot of the impact. They do a lot of cutaways and things like that. It, it's, it's, I don't know that that became a thing in the 21st century, like movies like saw and stuff where they actually showed a lot of the impacts. And I don't always think it's necessary. Yeah. Like to me, I thought that scene was perfectly creepy. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't need to see uh, a meat cleaver going into some prosthetic skull. You ever see the movie? Uh, uh, what was that called? Oh, uh, fuck. Um, Linda Hamilton, baby. Who, it was it called who could kill a child or something like that. Not sure. And it was kind of like this, but kind of more, I don't know, darker, I guess. They showed more stuff. But it was like kids running an island or something that some adults show up to or something. There's also a movie called by Troma called Beware Children at Play or something like that. And that movie, it's fucking shitty. It's like shot on shittio. But then, like, at the end, like, you, you, you watch these movies wanting to see these kids die, and then at the end, that movie delivers. You just see all these kids get fucking killed in great ways. And that's the only <laughs> reason people remember it. <laughs> I, like, uh, I remember the when I first saw Rambo 4 in the theater, and I went with a buddy, and I, there wasn't too many people there. We saw a late night showing, I think, but there were some older people there, right? It's Rambo. You mm-hmm. know, it's like he's not exactly attracting the young crowds. Anyway, man, in that fucking movie, man, they were they were gunning down little kids in Burma, and they're actually just fucking going for it. And I thought it was incredible because it was real, and it really made you feel like you were in it. And uh, fuck I think little kids, old people were kind of gasping a bit, but it happens. I think all kids should be put to death. <laughs> just kidding. Just kidding. You ever seen Blank Check with that kid who says that, Butch? That little fucking Blank. Hey, check. Preston, come with us. Mm-hmm. We need to do blank check. Like, Just kidding, Brian Bonzo. I he he deserved to be put to death. Look at that. Ro- he probably is on death row right now. You seen him? <laughs> Got that gangsta teardrop. Gangsta gangster at the top of the list. Remember that? Remember that when that like that dynamite hack? Remember that band that were on Farm Club? They did Boys in the Hood cover. They did the Boys in the Hood cover, and it was like a country song. It was kind of funny. Yeah. But then they disappeared. That was their only. They were one hit wonder. Yeah, I, you know, I would hate to go down as one of those bands where my only hit was somebody else's song, and it's just it's a novelty. It's like Alien Ant Farm. Yeah, because it's not even a serious cover. It's somebody clearly doing something tongue in cheek to get a reaction. Mm-hmm. Like we're this we're this nerdy white band with glasses. We all look like Buddy Holly. Let's do Boys in the Hood, and we'll sing it kind of like all cracker like. Mm-hmm. And uh, Alien Ant Farm, uh, you watch that stupid video and they're clearly making a mockery out of it because he's just, you know, all his like physicalities and stuff he's doing, the face he's making, he's clearly taking the piss on it. I think he just, he just makes those faces. He's just a goofy fuck. Yeah. I mean, you could even say almost the same thing about Marilyn Manson. There's the bands that maybe had a couple more hits, but they, they broke with a cover. Marilyn Manson did it with Sweet Dreams and... I roll my eyes when I hear that shit. Limp Bizkit did it with Faith, which really makes my turtles toes curl. Um, you have an orgasm? My toes curl. <laughs> oh, I guess I guess that, that could happen if you had an orgasm, too. <laughs> <laughs> Linda Hamilton was hot in this movie, baby. Yeah, I was going to ask you, is this uh, what year is this? Is this before T1? I want to say 88, maybe. 
No way. It's got to be earlier than that. That's Let me double check. I'll double check for once. You know what they what song they should have used in this? What? Chill on the Carry corner. into my soul's eyes. Reveal alone. I felt the wind the day. It was all about the pussy. pussy. If you could get it, a little girl like me never fucking like that. Oh, we ain't taking no more. So, you, so these the corn, right? They they're like, oh, we're gonna get uh, we're gonna get Ice Cube to come do a verse on one of our songs. How do you not feel embarrassed as fuck playing that verse for him? This is how this is this is gonna go before your verse, Ice Cube. Check this out. He said they're like it was all about the pussy. If you get it, what the fuck? What are you saying here? <laughs> What does this mean? You were a little girl that didn't like the pussy? He said he was a little girl. <laughs> hey, this this movie came out in 1984. I'm willing to bet it was probably pre-Terminator or around the same time. Basically, I guarantee you she filmed this before Terminator was a success, rather. Re- whether or not she actually filmed it at the same time, I don't know. She showed her titties in Terminator, baby. Yeah, man. Um, Damn titties, though. I would like to do... I'd like to nut in them titties. I'm surprised we haven't done any of the Terminator movies. I'd like to do the first one, man. The first one's great. Mm-hmm. The second one's amazing. I mean, I when I was a kid, I think I think most kids, a lot of us that are in this sort of age group, you know, I'm almost 32, I think, Zach. How old are you? 27? 27, I think. you think? I think Riverman, uh, his birthday was in April, and I, th- I think he just turned 33 because he's got like a year and some months on me. Um, but yeah, so people in our sort of age group, we grab We usually saw T2 first, you know, we were a little, t- we, ne- we never saw the first one and we saw T1 after, and I always liked it when I was a kid, but you know, I th- I still think T2 appeals to a broader audience, but when you get older, man, you really, really appreciate the first Terminator a lot. Look at that book on the, on the fucking, uh, windshield. That's Stephen King night shift, which is the book. This short story was in baby. Yeah, I like Stephen King's short stories a lot, actually. his I like those collections. There. I'm just a fan of... He doesn't have the time to spend 12 pages telling you about a fucking boat going through the rain. It's, well, it's a good. Paper it, boat. It, it, it sort of lassos him in and keep, makes you know forces him to, to keep it tighter. And, you know, short stories with those novellas and things like that. It's, it's just like a, an anthology series, a movie. Like, mm-hmm. it's like watching the Twilight Zone movie or something like that or... Uh, creep show, and I I really dig that because sometimes I don't know, man. It's really cool to just sort of like donate thirty minutes of your time to a really cool story. Mm-hmm. It helps keep your attention there. Hell yeah! Stop, burn this book now. It's kind of weird how he's narrating the movie. Which one? It's that little boy, right? Yeah, and I honestly can't remember what happens to the boy at the end. Nothing really. It's it's kind of weird that they decided to do this. It kind of stinks of like, oh, maybe the movie was originally longer and they had to cut it. And they we need uh we don't have this uh, an easy to follow narrative. Let's have the kid tell us what's going on while we're watching it. Why do they? I can't believe we have this creepy farm backwoods movie with barns and stuff, and there's zero rape involved. It, this whole scene here with the barn and the kids it reminds me of. You ever seen that movie Hound Dog with Dakota Fanning? Um, I don't think so. Okay, I think it got brushed under the rug and it's basically non-existent, but I never watched it. I didn't want to, but when it was kind of coming out, I, I read a review on it. This is years and years ago. This is when Dakota Fanning was still like a kid. She was still mm-hmm. like little. And there was this really grotesque rape scene that was described in the review. And with Dakota Fanning? Yeah. Ew. It was disgusting because Ew. Ew, 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 ew. I they're using those hook things. No, I I didn't want to watch the movie. I'm like, dude, just reading reading somebody write about it was vivid enough. And basically it was about this girl played by Dakota Fanning that was obsessed with Elvis in the fifties. It's why it's called Hound Dog, I guess. Well, I think Hound Dog's a play on words, right? Obviously the Elvis connection and probably maybe the Predator. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. But uh, you know, because he was a whoa whoa. <laughs> basically and yeah she basically this guy promises her this old guy i think he probably works on the farm he was like a caretaker worked for he was like a theo right theo type man i think 
uh, son-in-law reference. And he, I don't know, but basically there's an adult, whatever, says, hey, look, I've got these uh, Elvis tickets for you. Promises are going to get her an Elvis ticket. And she's all excited. And she's a little kid. And he asks her to meet her out in the barn to give her the Elvis tickets one one night. And it, you can probably imagine where it goes from there, you know. But it just it gets really descriptive on like how he just fucking rapes this little kid in the barn. Sounds sleazy. I should watch it. It's fucking. It's it's enough for me, man. Like reading about it is plenty. Reading about it is probably worse, man, because my mind is worse. But so save me! Ah, ah, and the children of book thirty. Hit your ass in my head with my 40. <laughs> How you gonna tell me where to skate? Who the day? I live, who the rip, who the love, who the dance? I live, what it is? Something's gotta give. You're supposed to trade off with me. You keep saying this. <laughs> I don't remember the lyrics completely. <laughs> Something's gotta give. The parents are the kids. It won't be the kids. We're talking shit because life is a bitch. You know what it is? Everybody try to get rich. God damn. All I want to do is live. All I want to do is live. I don't want to hurt my throat, man. All I want to do is live. <laughs> all I want to do. All I want to do. You're supposed to go, stop fucking with me. Is that Bitch. in the song? I don't remember. Yeah. When on the outro when he's going, all I want to do. All I it's want kind of to funny because do. I thought you were just jokingly saying something they they would say, but that is something they said. Yeah, as at the end. They're so easy to predict. Like it's at the end. There's always a part where he does this and it's funny. <laughs> anyway, when at the very end when he says All I want to do, he goes, is lit. And then Ice Cube at the same time, the background is saying, Stop. Fucking with me, bitch. That's where it ends. <laughs> you remember it more than I do. I, I guess I do, man. <laughs> I'm still waiting for you and Mac to do the uh, All in the Family cover. I can't find a fucking instrumental of that song. Well, that's too bad. Nobody gave a shit enough. <laughs> this dude, this lead male, he kind of reminds me of Steven Weber. Would you shoot your web all over Steven Weber? <laughs> no. Have you ever seen Steven Weber's uh, Shining, his Jack Torrance? Yeah. Yeah, no thanks. It it was abysmal. The one that Stephen King loves because it's faithful to the book. Yeah, I I don't know what Stephen King's problem is with The Shining. <laughs> that was awesome. That was the best child hit and run. Well, they didn't run away since Toxic Avenger. That's a great scene, yeah. But yeah, I don't know what fucking Stephen King's deal is with The Shining. He had his movie done by one of the greatest filmmakers, and he's pissing all over. Like, it wasn't good enough. I don't like how he 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 thought the book was just about Jack going crazy. Maybe he took it as a personal dig. It's like, hey, this guy agreed to do an adaptation off my book, but clearly decided he didn't really like my fucking book, and he decided to change it. It's not that different. Because I don't know, I know, it's just sort of the angle and stuff, and obviously the way he portrayed Jack. I wonder if um, Kubrick was approached to do it, and he agreed, or if it was Kubrick's idea. Like, he actually saw something in the book, he's like, hey, this would be a good movie, and if I can do my own spin on it. Because if it was a thing where he got approached to do it, and he agreed on the basis that he fucking change it, then I can kind of see how it's insulting, but he made a good movie. Mm -hmm. She got them grandma shorts on, man. Oh, she still look good. Hey, totally side note, uh, Zach, and this may or may not be relevant to the people listening, but lately I've had a bunch of audio issues, and uh, I reinstalled my program, Zach, and right now we're almost 21 minutes in and no hiccup. Cool. So maybe we solved it. Maybe we fucking solved it, man. Jinx. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> the next thing you say is gone. Dude, I mean, like, we, we did... We did that Halloween 2018 trailer reaction, which is live now for you guys to watch. And uh, my shit kept freezing <laughs> like every fucking two minutes on that. And it was only like 40 minutes long. I mean, the, the podcast itself turned out great. It just took some editing and retries on our part. But, you know, I mean, I've gone 22 minutes now and it's like that's that's making me feel pretty good. So I think hopefully the problem is solved. It's making my dick hang low, baby. If your chain hang low, does it wobble to the floor? <laughs> does it shine in the light? Is it platinum? Is it gold? 
That song's killer. The dankest fucking song ever made. I got to give Stephen King credit, man. Uh, so this is obviously written a, a while ago, uh, but the story's a good story, man. Like this is, if, if this is a good idea. Like as far as a really grounded, simple story. The kids should have all been having fuck like orgies, though. That would have made it better. How much do you think this movie cost? Nothing. Mm-hmm. Nothing. I mean, fucking cornfields. You got an entire region of the country that is nothing but this sort of landscape. And it's as simple as maybe even back then they probably got away without paying county taxes and state taxes. I don't know. But, you know, get permission from whoever owns the property, throw them a few bucks. That's funny that you mentioned that because the only reason I'm on the show is because uh, Aaron and Riverman got a tax write off for hiring a fucking, you know, slow person to work on the show, too. He's a dependent, I claim him. Yeah. It'd be a pain in the ass getting dressed like that every day, having to have overalls and a belt. And why are they, why do they, I can't remember, do they explain why they're kind of dressed? I get it. They're in the, they're, because in- they're fucking stupid. They're in the Midwest. I get it. But why are they dressed like the 1920s? Are they like pagan or something? Like, what is their religion? Wiccan. Maybe. It's kind of like a Wiccan type thing, but they they work. Don't, don't they have the Green Man? That's like the god at the end, the Green Man. What do they call it? What's his name? I think that's what they call. It. Or do they call it the Blue Man or something like that? The Blue Man Group shows up. They call they call it the Something Man, which I think is pagan. We'll see. Um, the Green Man is. So I was gonna guess that it was kind of like, kind of like being a Wiccan or paganism, but obviously a unique thing that Stephen King wrote. But you're saying the god they worship is actually attributed to a real if i remember right okay we'll have to we'll have to look that up once they say it they worship the golly green giant i thought he had an actual fucking name though like not green man i think they just call him something man i can't yeah. remember do they ever change that lore as with the sequels as they progress i don't think they ever touched on that again throughout the series yeah that's because i don't remember that in three at all and i i don't know why i mean i know they refer to him as he who walks behind the rose but I have a feeling he actually has a name in the third one. I remember when I when I was little and I watched these movies, I was like, why does he walk behind the rose? I didn't realize they were talking about rows of corn. I thought they meant like a rose, like the flower. Oh, I was like, that would suck having to walk behind a rose every time you went somewhere. I still thought that's what it meant. <laughs> I've never I've never even thought about that. That was a pretty cool scare. No, hold up. We got to stay on that for a second. I legit, until you just told me that, always thought it was the rose, like Kiss from a Rose. But no, Rose of Corn would make more sense because there's no fucking. But how you going to walk behind Rose of Corn and no matter what side you're on, you're in front of it in some way. <laughs> but there's no, but there's no roses here. But like I said, maybe the rose, I always figured the rose was metaphorical. Yeah. You know, I'm going to look it up now. That's driving me crazy. Like Rose, you think, oh. Pretty, so it's the opposite of pretty. It's like the walks devil on the dark side. Yeah, no, you're fucking right. It's rose, like rose of corn, dude. They, they're talking about the people that come and, and grab the corn and then they take it to be eaten. That's their god. Mind is blown right now, man. Did you ever have that job growing up in the Midwest where you had to go fucking grab corn and shit? No, I didn't live in. A cornfield and work on a farm. I lived in Omaha, a big city. But it's funny you mentioned that, though. Uh, when I was a kid in Omaha, we were really poor, and we rented this old kind of dilapidated house. Had a really scary basement, by the way. It was a really old house. It was probably built in the fucking 40s or 50s, if not older. All the rug kind of smelled musty and old, and it was weird, vibrant colors in every room. And like I said, the basement was dingy, and it was like a one of those basements that probably got flooded, and it looked like a home alone, scary cellar basement. And um, it had two floors besides the basement, and we were so poor that on the way home from work or wherever the hell my parents went on a daily basis, they would drive past this cornfield and steal corn, and we'd eat that. They did. They would steal corn. And we'd have corn all the time. Literally, they would just make corn on the cob and boil corn. And we ate just fucking, we ate a side for dinner all the time. And I'll never forget it, man. I'll never forget them coming home with all these husks of corn. And I remember one day we were sitting in the kitchen eating our fucking corn, like usual. <laughs> the the bathroom, right? The bathroom upstairs. There was only one bathroom. And it was upstairs. And it was directly above the kitchen. Anyway, 
As we were eating corn in the kitchen, the bathtub falls to the ceiling floor. <laughs> what? The fucking whole tub falls to the ceiling floor. Like some Did it fucking, hurt anybody? No, it it missed us. <laughs> it landed right in the middle of the floor. Luckily, our table wasn't right in the middle. It wasn't. Our table was like off to the side. Were you calm enough to make a joke? Like... I was a little kid, man. I don't know. What what, what joke could you make? What, what fucking pun could you throw out there? The only thing that would have made it funny is if it was just like a, a, a movie or a variety show where like my dad was in the tub at the time. He had a shower cap on. <laughs> but no, it wasn't. It was an empty tub. The house was just dilapidated. And I, I, I'm willing to bet like maybe it, this shit was rotting, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, it was it was really old. But did you have to get another tub or did you just take it back up there? I don't remember what happened. Like my, it's a it's a big blank. We we didn't live there very long at all. Uh, and I remember it was in the year 1992 because my my brothers who were twins were born in that house, and we used to make the them sleep. same year. Coincidence? I think not. The same year, the first Polly Shore comedy album came out. <laughs> so yeah, his his life was on the incline, and ours was fucking looking pretty dire. We had bathtubs <laughs> falling through the ceiling. Uh, little, little did he know that we would even out in just a few short years, <laughs> but, uh, no man, it was in 1992 cause my brothers were born and they they were twins. And I remember we probably, it, isn't time is a weird thing perspective wise when you were a kid. Cause certain things seem like it was certain things burn in your mind as if you lived there for years, but really you probably yeah, didn't. Yeah. I, I don't, I think we literally lived in this house for a, a, a couple months. It wasn't mm-hmm. long. I have a memory of like going to the hospital to see my sister for the first time when she was born. Uh huh. So I, I would have been like three or four, maybe. And but I don't remember getting inside, seeing my mom, seeing my sister. I just remember walking towards the hospital, looking up, seeing my dad. I'm holding his hand. We're walking towards the hospital. But I don't remember. It's, it's selective. It, yeah, it's weird. It, well, so, for example, like these brothers I told you that were actually born in that house, we were living in another house when they were conceived and when my mom was pregnant, and then they were actually born in this house. We took them home from the hospital, and we used to, they literally slept in a shitty dresser drawer, dressers. We put them in drawers, like fucking Seinfeld. Like the the seven dwarves, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I remember they were still basically newborns, and we lived, we moved to Tennessee with uh, one of our grandma, you know, the uh, uh, my dad's parents. So, just... Looking at that sort of timeline, we only stayed there a couple months. It's, it's, you know, it's impossible. But, uh, so we probably moved right after that shit happened. But anyway, that house does have another memory I associate. Um, well, there was, there was, there was two memories. I think my mother, she, I was too young to realize it at the time, but I guess my dad had gotten in some trouble with some drug people and there was some people following. Uh, my mom around going to work. He had that dank shit. Well, no, just, 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 he was into that stuff. So, but anyway, so there'd be like these, these guys and these gang, like driving past our house all the time. Like almost like they're like marking my mom or my dad. And I think that might be one of the reasons why we booked town. Uh, and also that's the house where my brother threw a fucking brick in my face. What a fucking prick. We, we, we were you playing. Should've, you should have fucking hit him in the face with a brick. We were, <laughs> we were playing tag in the front yard and uh, literally it was like ch- running around the tree in the front yard. And uh, I, I literally got him. I said, tag, you're it. And he he chased after me and he got real close to me. And a- around the tree, there was like a, a little garden uh, aligned with bricks, you know, and he grabbed a brick and just fucking chucked it right in my face from like two feet. That's kind of like uh, when I was like on my tenth birthday. We at night we were like, yeah, let's play, uh, let's play tag or hide and go seek or something. It must have been tag because we were all fucking running at each other and shit. But like there was a little shed, and and I went, like I went to run like behind it from one side, and my friend Derek went to run behind it from the other side at the same time, and like we both see each other running at each other, but we're we're running too fast, and it's. Too short notice to just stop, so we both just smash into each other. Oh. And my nose is bleeding profusely. Yeah, I was That's bleeding never- profusely, too. I went inside, and, I mean, I just got a fucking brick thrown on my face, and, and I had blood all over my face, and I remember my mom was on the phone with somebody, probably my grandma, I don't know, and then I remember she just grabbed me and put her in a lap. She's like, oh, my baby just got hit with a brick. <laughs> Whenever you're watching like uh, Clerks 2 in that line, they're talking about the ending of uh, Lord of the Rings. And he says, you know what would have made that ending better? If fucking Frodo just flat out bricked in his in Sam's face or whatever. Did you think of that? <laughs> like, I got bricked in the face once. 
No, I didn't think of that. I haven't thought about that in years, actually. It's weird because you have some of those memories where they you, they just kind of spark in your memory through natural conversation like we're having now mm-hmm. through chain of events. You know, we're talking about I, I haven't thought about that in years, but because we were talking about children of the corn and they were by the cornfield where they found the dead body, it reminded me of that when we used to have to my mom stole corn and we eat and then it reminded me of that house in the bathtub and then it led me to the brick. It's weird. just like a little breadcrumbs. Sweet. But um, the only other memory from that house I'll bring up was a good one because I remember my father's mother she mailed us a brand new copy of link to the past and when we were in that house you said brand new i thought you were gonna say she mailed you a brick no not a brick. like just (laughs) just a fucking twist the knife like remember that time you got hit with a brick (laughs) it was yesterday grandma (laughs) yeah no but she sent us a copy of link to the past and i don't remember what the occasion was it was just kind of randomly and we had a super nintendo but um yeah, we, we had a Super Nintendo. Uh, we had gotten one the year before, and uh, I think Link to the Past was basically new. Um, and she sent it to us, and it was glorious, man. I remember opening up that package and smelling that book. I, I wish I still had the manual, because the manual, I believe, had a little bit had, had basically a guide in it. Mm-hmm. And it came with like the map you can fold out and stuff. And I'll never forget the smell of that book. It smelled amazing. And my dad, that was the, my dad was obsessed with the game. I think that was one of the earlier memory. That was the earliest memory I can think of where my dad, like I saw him get obsessed with the game and I'd, I'd sleep in the living room and I'd, I'd fall asleep and I'd wake up and I'd just kind of watch him play it all night. So he, he was getting through it before we ever did. And we didn't live in this house very long. We then went to my grandmother's house and I remember he was playing it like fucking crazy in that house too. So cool memory, I guess. And the original theatrical trailer for Stephen King's Children of the Corn, Stephen King's name is misspelled as S-T-E-V-E-N. What an idiot. That's genius. I, I, I never understood people. They have one job. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? That, that fuck up shit like that? They have one job, but they do it like probably 80 times a day. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's ridiculous. I, I was, what was I playing? Uh, oh, I this is kind of video game talk, but I got that Street Fighter collection that just dropped for PS4 and Switch and all that shit. And um, I got the Switch version, and I was playing it in bed last night. And that was back in the days. Nowadays, those mistakes don't happen with translations and stuff and text. Mm-hmm. But in the '90s, it was still happening. And yeah, it's I, it, it, there was this really glaring error, and I don't remember what it was. I think it's literally instead of putting the word two. The fucker literally put the word of, and it made no fucking sense. And, and it was like the taunt at the end when you get beaten. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I don't know. And I used to think that self like those guys had one job. Like there was, they got, they got a guy in America that translates this shit. <laughs> what is this excuse, man? You play that was happening as late as 97 final fantasy seven. He, his excuse was probably Coke. That's the last uh, big name game. I can remember where that was an issue, Final Fantasy VII, and I get it, it's a massive game, it was three discs, and there really wasn't any games like it at the time, so there was a lot, and a lot of text, and a lot of translation. That would be a shitty job to have, having to translate all that. Yeah, it, re- it really would. It really it really would, but, um, yeah, I don't know. I'd probably be tempted to fuck some shit up on purpose, and then just see if people notice. I mean, they would, but it'd be awesome. Well, people do that when they when they do ROMs of games. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Somebody will take liberties and they'll like edit the fucking text and stuff, which is funny. And I wouldn't make it so obvious, like at the start of the game. I would keep like a game like Final Fantasy VII or one of the FF games totally the same. And you're like 20 hours into it, and all of a sudden, like one of the characters says something really left field, like you know, how about I nut in your mouth or whatever? Like, <laughs> well, what? And, and then just leave it there. <laughs> How about you sit on my dick and we'll see who comes first? <laughs> yeah, that, that's like the bad guy taunt. <laughs> <laughs> or just like the, the fight club all of a sudden just shows a big cock. Yeah, yeah. Just out of nowhere for one frame. So we're going to get ripped because we stopped talking about the movie. We, we, got, a, we got another fun comment like a couple days ago. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll read all the comments and stuff or, you know, the best comments here at the end of the show, but it's so funny, man. Some people get uptight about it. Put one of them on our uh, Instagram. The funnier one about oh, Feldman. Yeah, that one's funny. That one was funny. Uh, <laughs> that's so funny. 
It's fucking amazing. See, yeah, I know. Corey Feldman, is it not enough that you're ruining your own life? You're ruining our fucking lives, too? What was that tweet that Josh sent us from Corey Feldman this morning? It was him giving props and pouring a drink on the floor for a dead homie, I guess, and it just didn't sound like English. Yeah, he he misspelled a couple words. It sounded like he was on Ambien. (laughs) It was all caps, too. So you have to assume he was screaming it at the top of his lungs when you're reading it. And it was a and it was a giant run on sentence. Like I don't think there's any periods. It was a bunch of like weird. <laughs> He's a weirdo, man. He can't Twitter. He can't even Twitter. So what's the deal with? I get it. So they're kind of going through and they're killing the adults, but. This guy, he's very familiar with the situation. So these adults live in fear, and they just sort of like, uh, it's like a mafia thing, right? They they do things to kind of please the corn gods. Yeah, you think they the adults will just leave at this point? Yeah. yeah, just move. What the fuck's he still working for? He's doing his mechanic job. Who's paying him? Who's yeah, exactly the kids? It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> They're like, well, we need working cars. We'll let you live. Well, I mean, Malachi looks old enough to drive. At what point do they kick you out of this cult? Once you turn 18, they kill you. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right, right? Mm Mm-hmm. On your 18th birthday or something. So, he who walks behind the rose also acknowledges earthly laws of 18 being an adult? I guess. Because you think he would be like a biblical thing where it's like as soon as you uh, uh, are mature. Like, you know, in the Bible days, it's like as soon as you have your period as a woman, you're a woman, right? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and as a man, as soon as you're you go through puberty, you're a man. And then it's just like somewhere along the way, modern civilization, we deemed eighteen was a good age. You know, isn't that kind of weird? Like eighteen, that's a good age. Yeah, it has something to do with like the brain or something. Like once you turn eighteen but then but your brain doesn't stop completely forming until you're in your twenties. Yeah, no, I agree, man. I wasn't the same when I was eighteen. I was still I still felt like I was learning a lot. I, I couldn't have voted at 18. I didn't actually vote when I was 18. And I'm glad I didn't because I didn't have a grasp of all that stuff. Yeah. Everybody ages at a different pace, though. This is a cool music here. It really is. Like the Omen soundtrack. You know, I've never actually watched The Omen. I've never watched the Omen because I've because for years and years and years I've basically heard I've heard the plot and I've heard just certain I, it, that it's a classic but I've heard from people that aren't like film journalists just kind of like critique it saying yeah it's this big bad movie where you got this Satan incarnate and he kills like fucking three people in the whole movie and it's boring oh they're fucking retarded they can suck my dick but you would you would recommend it. I actually saw the remake first, and it was a shot-for-shot shot remake. Oh, was it really with Lee F. Schreiber? Yeah, it came out on 60606. That was the gimmick. They're like, hey, 666 is coming up. Let's remake The Omen. We'll just reshoot the whole fucking thing. I remember that. I remember that. But then they tacked on like a, a different beginning where it's showing like the Vatican, and they're watching like they, they see like footage of 9-11, and they're like, oh, clearly the end times are coming. Any day now. So so they set it around that. So you would personally recommend the original? I like it, yeah. What about the what about the Omen three with fucking Sam Neill that's always streaming? I don't remember liking either of the sequels. There's like a fourth one too that came straight to video. You know what movie you know what movie's finally getting a special edition starring Sam Neill and it comes out in July and I'm excited about it? In the mouth of madness. Hell yeah. I, I love that movie, man. I actually, well, it's not a great movie, like by normal stand, but it's, I like it. It's a movie I enjoy. And to mm-hmm. me, it's one of the last good car. It might, to me, it's the, uh, the bridge of good and bad carpenter, you know, mm-hmm. like it's that last movie that you can kind of clearly see this is nineties carpenter now, but it was the last one that was good and it represented a turning point, but I enjoy it. Hell yeah. So isn't it weird that this 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 man child is a- that guy back there by Malachi looks like a grown ass man? Do you see him? <laughs> you see that fucking doofus? The dude with the dirt on his face? Yeah, look at him right there. He's in the back. He looks like Crisp from Kindergarten Cop. <laughs> yeah, they probably didn't just want to hire kids. No, but these are kids though. It wouldn't it be weird. See, I think that's him. I think they call him the Blue Man. But I want. But I think I think he has a name in the third one. I really do. I think he, they gave him a fucking title, a name. And they end up putting a Hamilton up there too, on a cross. The musical guy, what? Linda Hamilton. They end oh. up putting her up there too. 
Do you think it's weird though that like this guy? Uh, look at him. He looks like fucking Ethan Embry. The f- or not Ethan Embry. Uh, what's the guy from My Name Is Earl? The fat brother. Oh, yeah. he just kind of looks like. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, so this guy. Do you think it's weird that he's a man child playing a child because he has that appearance of a child and he has to act alongside children, like as they're as if they're a contemporary? It's kind of weird. That would be like, weird. So what if this guy was a pedophile? Right, he's looking at all these children. He looks like a child, but he's really getting erect. That'd be awesome. And so, you'd think a guy like this could easily molest one of those kids. Like, do you think? Do you think one of those like little girls like has a crush? Usually on a movie set, they're pretty. They're pretty like uh, close the kids away. on the kids. Yeah, they're not allowed to be filming after like seven o'clock or something. Did they call that the uh, Corey Haim act after him and Feldman were rammed up the ass so many times? Yeah, I don't know. Like we gotta, we gotta change the way this works. And they also, a lot of people don't want to hire kid actors because they have to make sure there's a trailer on set and a teacher to come and teach them. Yeah, no, yeah, it's a. And this movie was like all kids. Mm-hmm. But dude, this this fucking this Courtney kid is giving it his all. Yeah, he's overacting every scene, but it's great. <laughs> he's great. What other movies is he in? He's in Rob Zombie's Halloween. Is he? Yeah, he was the fucking one of the guys that rapes the prisoner. Oh, the the, the mentally. Yeah, that's right. I, I remember I called that when I saw it, it was him and Lou Temple. Mm-hmm. Mm, interesting. I have a question for you, Zach. Do you think we're talking about the movie enough to please the the bitchers that were saying those things? I don't think we could po- like if we just talked about the movie the whole time, we would run out of stuff to talk about pretty quick. Yeah, I mean, I, I like to think uh, the stories we tell and the things we interlace in there are fun. They're, they make it fun for me. Mm-hmm. And I, I remember when I, I well, sometimes when I read those comments, I, I'll share them with Zach and whatever. And I think they're funny. Uh, and I, and I'm, I, don't get me wrong. I appreciate them. I, anybody that has negative things, post all you want. I like comments. Um, but I do think it's funny because, yeah, if I if I was forced to keep the commentary like as its namesake and we had to do nothing but talk about everything we're seeing on the screen oh yeah look at that hole in that glass yeah look at that car what year you think that is zach it, it would be too much like you know mystery sci-fi theater but it's a podcast so you also don't just want to be hearing what is being visually represented and it would be boring i mean that's why i think our commentaries in this whole podcast is listenable without video accompaniment yeah, that's right. That's a big thing we try to do is make it so that you don't have to watch it. Because let's be honest, man, most people don't sit down and watch commentaries and watch a movie at the same time. It, the internet makes it too hard because you can't just put the movie up there with it because you get it flagged down. So that that and that's just such a small group of people that actually like to listen to the audio while watching the movie. You know, our good friend uh, Josh James from R Rated Horror Commentary, uh, he does. Like everything we put out, he watches with the movie, which is cool. And that is fun, but it takes a lot more effort on my part. Like I, the older we get, the busier we get. I love listening to audio. I love it. And I, and I can listen to like Josh James. His podcast is a little bit more serving to the movie, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I, I still enjoy it without watching the movie. I really do. And so I'm busy. So instead of not partaking in this stuff, I'll do my stuff during the day. I'll drive around town, run errands. I'll do my job and I'll listen to the stuff while I'm multitasking. If I, if I had to watch a movie with it, I would never get anything else done. So Mm -hmm. anyway, bring, bring the mail. Keep, keep messaging. I enjoy it regardless. Ask us any question you want. We'll answer a baby. We should have called him. Josh gave us the pitch. He's like, He's like, it's like, it's like an anti-commentary. That's what he called us. He said we're anti-commentaries. I'm like, man, I wish we would have thought of that from day one. Like <laughs> he said, not in Terry or something like that too. That one I didn't like. <laughs> There's a couple he said, <laughs> but the anti-commentary. I'm like, wow, that would have been a good idea. Uh, you know, Children of the Corn, 1984, anti-commentary. You also like the idea of just rebranding all of them, not a blah 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 commentary, <laughs> which we've called a, a couple commentaries. Like the Home Alone commentary. We called it not a Home Alone commentary because we didn't talk about it. You know, and what's weird is, and I hate it that how we title certain things is dictated by analytics and stuff. But the reason why I wouldn't do that, like not not a Children of the Core commentary, is because uh, Google Analytics and things like that and search um, optimization and stuff, You, I, from what I've always heard and been told, it's better if you put the, the title, like you want the movie title first. 
right? Oh, yeah. If we put not a fucking uh, movie commentary and, and that's like four words into it, that kind of hurts the optimization and the results of it. Um, also, numbers help. And I think also, I want to say shorter titles titles are better too. Like, uh, so basically as much to the point as you can get with keywords. So mm-hmm. that's that's the only reason. But I think once you get a, to a certain size, like if you were PewDiePie, you can call your videos whatever the fuck you want, right? Obviously, um, you're getting your hits. But, you know, we got a lot of competition. I've heard like YouTube so fucked up now that even he can't like survive without doing another job or something. Uh, I I think he invested. If he didn't invest the money he had into other avenues, and he's retarded, he's dumb. You know, it's like I don't. He shouldn't have to do other jobs because it's like a couple years ago he was worth like what eight million dollars or something. It's probably it's probably like most of his money he's got through Patreon now. That's how most of them are. I don't know. He's he's fine. He's okay. And it could have happened to a more talented guy. I'll tell you. <laughs> yeah, it's horrible. Uh, if. Even if the internet just stopped working tomorrow, I would hope he has money in the bank and he could retire and he's fine. He wouldn't have to get a job. Mm-hmm. Fuck, dude, you give me $4 million right now, I'm going to go invest and I'm going to buy properties, invest in some real estate. I'll never work again, you know? I'm going to get fucking laid. <laughs> Snore some blow off titties. Not really, but. I could have. This literally looks like the type of house I was telling you about where the bath- bathtub fell to the ceiling. Cool. Like really old. Though real corn was used for most of the filming, polyurethane corn had to be used for the more difficult action scenes. Do- <laughs> so like uh, styrofoam? Okay. Do you know uh, Do you know what other horror movie where that has corn that plays a uh, crucial role in the story? Um, no. Okay, so I kind of lied. It's not a crucial point in the story, but it does have a cool kill. Do you remember the Stephen King movie Sleepwalkers, where the mom... I've never seen that. Okay, well, yeah, it's another Stephen King, too, by the way. That's okay. Stephen King has a thing for corn. Sleepwalkers is a... It's another one of those okay movies. It's a movie I saw a million times growing up, so for that reason i like it it's not a great movie is there incest in that movie i've heard there is which means i should i should watch it because i love those movies i uh <laughs> i and you like those youtubers too i know but uh <laughs> i think i can't be sure but i want to say sleepwalkers it, it the movie itself is kind of like you can tell it was probably from a short story too but i'm not too sure i think it was but uh basically there's this mother and son, the son's in high school, and they're of this weird, like, mutant cat species. They have human exteriors, but they have a true form, you know? It's these cat, like, fucking monsters. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I, th- there's this scene where a cop's digging around for answers because people have been disappearing because uh, the, the son ended up killing uh, a cop, I believe. And the cop is invited in by the mother and he's like, Oh, let me sit down and make you some coffee and we'll talk. And he sits at the table and she's making dinner and she takes a cob of corn and stabs it in his fucking back. Nice. He should have snatched it out of her hand and fucked her with it. And she said something to the, in regards to, uh, you know, after it was like a one liner, like after she killed her with the, the husk of corn, you have to eat your vegetables. Those are the rules. Something like that. Something stupid. He should have dipped it in her, in her giny. And then suck the juices off. So I wonder what's in the book as far as the incest goes. Because Stephen King, he obviously took a little bit more liberty at detailing that stuff. And, you know, I mentioned because he was he had this thing for fucking full bukkake scenes, hopefully. Well, he had a thing for pointless stuff in his books. Like, you know, we could edit that out. Like he lacks. It, it seemed like he lacked an editor. He got so big after a while. Nobody, none of the publishers really cared about editing. Like, OK, it's cool. We'll take it. That's the shit you don't want to edit out. You just want to edit out like, oh, the the paper boat was going through the rain for a long time. That's the stuff you want to edit no. out. But you know what I mean? Like, I, it's kind of like in Hollywood, you, you, you typically, you typically, you want to keep your scripts at a certain length. Like, you don't turn in your script to a producer and it's longer than 120 pages. If it's longer than like 120 pages... Uh, which is uh, approximately a two-hour movie. Most most people will just kind of like never read it or throw it out because it's just too much. <sighs> but, but every fucking comedy now is over two hours. 
Yeah, I don't know. It's really ridiculous. But you have someone like James Cameron who can turn over Avatar three and a half hour long, these giant scripts and stuff like that. And they don't even care anymore because he's James Cameron. Like he can break the rules. Stephen King, I really have a feeling he got to that point where he could turn his shit into the publishers and they don't care. They'll take it. He's Stephen King. It's got to be gold. He gets automatic money up front, uh, you know, the whole deal. But he has, I think he had a self editing problem. Cause like you, you read the it book, like we've talked about in the past and, there's certain scenes, man, like the junkyard scene and the boys jerking off each other. He says that he doesn't remember writing that book. He was on coke the whole time. Yeah, and he was fucking kids or something, too, I guess. He was all about it. But you, in real life? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I mean, like, I'm joking. No one, please don't tell Stephen King. He's 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 a sassy guy. He'll come. He'll come at me. He'll come at you, in, bro. in social media. Yeah. <laughs> but uh yeah, man, he's got in Pet Cemetery too. I told you about the hand job scene. That's just kind of really out of place. Like, okay, that's a great scene. He comes. <laughs> it's just, it's just interesting. Like, does this really have to be here? Don't you want to hear the fucking beauty uh, behind a grown man and woman, and and the woman making the guy come with just her hands, <laughs> and in the bathtub, no less. Where you're already sitting in your own filth. Now you got your own cum in there too. <laughs> You're just marinating in your own stews. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. It's like when uh, Elmer Fudd used to, Elmer Fudd, or the, no, it was actually the witch character. The witch would like put Bugs Bunny in the cauldron, the boiling mm-hmm. water, and then he would like start bathing like he was in the bathtub and she put vegetables in there. So what if you put a guy in the cauldron and he started bathing and you started jerking off in the water? It's like whenever I go to a hotel that has a fucking uh, hot tub, uh-huh. like if somebody else is in there, I'll turn the heat up and then start slicing carrots into it. And then just be, I'll walk away, just be like, yeah, just just simmer, just sit there. <laughs> Dude, like- That's a Mitch Hedberg joke. Have you been in a- Yeah, I, I don't remember that one, actually. <laughs> I don't remember that, but have you ever been in a hot tub? Yeah. I will never go into another like public one, like uh like ones at gyms and community centers because they're just so gross, man. You see like the because they don't maintain them, they don't t- clean them enough and I'll like walk past one, man, and I'll see like this disgusting film on top and it literally reminds me like it's some jizz. It's some guy's load floating to the surface. You know. Sweet. Because you know all those old men sitting there and they keep They their- try to fuck the little jets. That shoot the water. No, yeah, no. Well, they don't fuck the jets. I think those old men sit there and they put their assholes on the jets, and, and, and it feels good. And I think they just fucking pre come and all those fucking pre come fucking just floats to the top. And that's all I can think about when I look at that film at the at the, at the surface. I'm like, no, thanks. That's awesome. Oh, fuck, that's gross. I knew a guy that used to be the jizz mopper at one of those peep show places. The jizz mopper. That mm-hmm. should be that should be a band we should start. Jizz mopper. Yeah. The jizz mopper, man. That's fucking gross. How much did he make? I bet you he still made minimum wage, but they hired him and he was a convict or something. Like, they, they're really <laughs> lenient with that stuff. I don't remember. But, like, yeah, they he basically, he was saying that, like, anybody that dropped, like, money or quarters on the floor, they'd just leave them there because the floor was coated in jizz. Oh, dude. So, he would, uh, he'd have gloves on and he'd pick the quarters up and wash them off and keep them. Ugh. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> you know, blood money to come money, dude. I wouldn't want that. That's fucking gross. Oh, it's genius. You could drop that quarter in a chick's Johnny. She might get pregnant. <laughs> Can you imagine um, being a patron and just going into one of those places and you're basically standing in all this sticky other fucking pot and cum and you're getting off? It's awesome. And adding to the fucking cocktail of jizz on the floor. I just I would get on that floor and start licking it. I wonder if like there's some perverts that take that job that do that. I guess if you're the owner of the place, you wouldn't care as long as it gets clean. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, ah, however he does the job is how he does the job. Like that scene in Clerks, they're like, yeah, the jizz mopper. And he, they were talking about how people always seem to like jizz on the glass. Because <laughs> there's a glass between you and the chick. Yeah. That's gross, man. That would that'd be a terrible job. You'd have to pay me a lot. That's weird. I couldn't do it, man. Like I get it. Um, uh, you go to a strip club, which isn't my thing either. Um, you get a lap dance, and you know there's more contact, but you're not allowed to pull out your shit and touch them and jerk off. But 
if you want to jerk off, you have to do it where there's a place and there's plate glass. Then you can jerk off, but you ain't going to get touched. Personally, man, not to get too uh, intimate, but I, I probably couldn't just jerk off at some chick dancing. That's a sweet picture. I want it. I don't know if they dance or if they actually get physical and they like play with themselves with, like weird toys and shit. I don't know. I don't know how that shit works, man. We should see when we go. I have a feeling that's what you do secretly. Uh, that's what you do at night. You always go place at night and like, yeah, I'm mopping the cum floor. <laughs> no, you know, it, so we got to talk to, so I, I've been so wrapped up in some family drama, but I, we got to talk to Josh and see what the, the game plan is. I just want to talk to Josh. Maybe he'll record this Friday or something. We'll talk to him this week and, uh, we'll see. We'll just get it all ironed out. Cause then, you know, river man's not going, that's just not going to happen. I knew it wouldn't happen. I brought it up to Mac. If he can save money. Yeah, I mean, he could be my guest. Yeah, tech, <laughs> first he's invited. Like this isn't like a wedding, dude. We don't all get a plus one. What the fuck? <laughs> Please, mm-hmm. if you're gonna bring a rando, we need to tell everybody that. Please, I, I, it's funny the whole plus one. Well, I'm not paying for him, so if he could pay it, <laughs> I can't stop him. But but uh, no, I mean like the whole. <laughs> I'm just going to be in Vegas, too. No, it's cool. No, he's cool. But I'm saying, like, it's weird. Like, Vegas isn't one of the... It's not like a wedding where you can just bring a plus one without telling anybody. I know this from experience. Like, if you're going to Vegas with anybody, it's kind of cool to kind of let everybody know who you're bringing. Just kind of in their kind of personality. Because my story, my last time in Vegas, derailed heavily because of that. With your... Yeah, and all that stuff, and it turned it. I'll censor that because you didn't want me. To say. Yeah, you really need to, man. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you, you you gotta edit that out. <laughs> I will. He kind of looks like a buddy I had that I was in a band with for a while. Oh, the redhead kid. He looks like Bobby Budnick. He was in the band Bad for Good. Bad for good. What was that song they had? I don't. I don't remember how it goes. I'm 17 or something. Something like that. I'm only 17. <laughs> it's she's only 17. 17. That's a song about when Bobby Butnick like got fucked by the guy from White Snake or something. He had Steve Vai's guitar pick from White Snake. At the time, Steve, when that show was on the air, Steve Vai was in the band White Snake, and that's when he name dropped him on the show. Do you think White Snake is a reference to like shooting a rope of jizz? Everything with them was phallic, you know, their album titles and their covers and stuff and slot, you know, gonna slide it in, rock to the top, gonna slide it in, go never gonna stop. You know, everything was talking about that Bruce Dennis song. Which one? Bring your daughter to the slaughter, to the slaughter. Yeah, that's a horrible song. That song won worst metal song of that year, and that was on the uh, Nightmare on Elm Street three or five soundtrack. It is horrible. And fun fact, that is the that is their highest charting song in the UK. I think it was a UK, it was a UK number one. Why? And it's a horrible song. It's probably one of those things where it was riding high from the album that came before it, type of thing. You know. That was a solo, though. That wasn't even Iron Maiden. Uh, Bring Your Daughter to the Slaughter? No, it was an Iron Maiden song. I don't think so. I think it was just Bruce Dickinson. Mm, I think it was on No Prayer for the Dying. Let me just double check, man. Maybe they re-recorded it, but I'm pretty sure it was on just his solo album when it first came out. He covered Mott the Hoople. All the young dudes carry the news in his solo album. All you young dudes. Bow before me. Yeah, dude, it's 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 an Iron Maiden song off No Prayer for the Dying, their shitty album. Yeah, it must have been recorded because I know that was just he wrote that by himself. I think. Oh, it looks like he. Uh, okay, the one on it's on Dream Child. The Dream Child version was re-recorded. Just Bruce Dickinson looks like. Oh, okay. I think it, I th- it, that's way that's way it looks. That's let weird. Me, let me see if it was. You sounded like you were like that's weird. Let me you, see. You, you turn into a UK old woman all of a sudden. Okay, so you know what? We're both right. Here's here's the Wikipedia. The song was originally recorded and released by Bruce Dickinson for the soundtrack A Nightmare on Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. But Steve Harris liked it so much that Iron Why? Man... Why? Well, Steve Harris liked it so much that he also wanted Iron Man to record it later. Wow. Steve, you were just fucking... You were just... He had a bit high that day. He's also a rich guy that refuses to get his teeth replaced. He's missing a fucking tooth, which drives me crazy. 
Steve Harris? Yeah. The bassist. He's missing, like, you know, one of his canines, you know? So it's like it's visible when he smiles. It's like, it's just like, dude, you're fucking rich. Dude, he's, he's fucking punk. He can't fix that. That's metal. I wonder, uh... Yeah, okay. I had no idea. Okay, so we're both right. I don't think I recall hearing that version. It can't be any better. It's probably worse, actually. What was Bruce Dickinson's uh, solo album called? Tattooed Millionaire. Wasn't there one that, like, something... Balls for Picasso or something? (laughs) Balls for Picasso? I think that was one of them. Is there a nut for Van Gogh (laughs) follow-up? Hopefully. (laughs) I just... (laughs) Balls to Picasso, I think, was the name of it. Is there is there a I brick for Goya album? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Michelangelo. Yeah. Where are we at in the movie now? What's going on here? The shit's about to hit the fan. Oh They're yeah. They're gonna fucking molest Lima Hamilton. I said Lima. Yeah, that was weird. I was Lima, just gonna let it go. Come on, Lima. I'm gonna molest you, Lima. They just pull her pants down. <laughs> <laughs> that looked like a dude with a wig on. Probably was, man. Kind of, it kind of looked like uh, the fucking the dude from Scary Movie with the little dick. The picture of his little dick. Yeah, and he, and he was on uh, Freddy vs. Jason. Yeah, that's got to be incorporated into the thumbnail somehow, if possible. This has some Wicker Man vibes. I love that movie. The original or the Nick Cage one? The original. Okay. Dude, I went to the theater. Look at that guy's pumpkin pie Lloyd Christmas haircut. I, I, I saw the, the remake of the theater, too. It's bad, dude. <laughs> we should we should do a thing on that. We should cover that. Hey, dude, that's Nick Cage at his overacting finest, man. Bees! Bees! What was that about? They just put fucking bees on his face for no reason. I don't know, but that was the start of his decline. There were still Nick Cage movies coming out, but it was like him doing all his shitty like horror movie uh, I remember sitting in the theater watching that, just being so fucking perplexed at what the fuck am I seeing? Just him, like at the beginning on the little bike where he's mm-hmm. playing the cop. It's like this is so fucking goofy. You remember it's, more about it than I do. Yeah, it's not good though. And I've seen it once. How come they haven't remade Children of the Corn yet? Surprising. It is really surprising. They're remaking everything. You think they would? Yeah, I'm surprised. I wonder if the uh, the Arrow version of this Blu-ray is worth getting. Yeah, I don't know. He's like Tom Cruise, just as crazy. <laughs> hey, and I'm sure Tom Cruise has been in a setting just like this at the Scientology headquarters. <laughs> she looks like fucking uh, Joan of Arc from Bill and Ted. Yeah, that might be her. The chick? No, that's the chick from the Go Go's. Oh yeah, that's right. But it's saying she's also too short. She's like Rhea Perlman short. So he's 18. They're going to kill him is what it is, right? He's going to be sacrificed. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. <laughs> we should do Tromeo and Juliet. He's in that movie. Lemmy is? Mm-hmm. He's in a bunch of trauma movies. Like as a cameo. Yeah. Oh, you think there's a social commentary on this? This movie? I don't know. Like, what are all those little fucking shit's gonna do? Look at him. Back off. It's the Necronomicon. What is this? People all died so young. Not die. We go to him. He does look like Tom Cruise. I just want to suck his dick. Uh, did they say his name yet? Oh, he said he who walks behind the rose still. They should have changed it to he oh. who comes behind the rose. Why'd she stab him on the opposite side of his heart? Because she's a fucking bitch. Oof. She just wanted to fuck up his day, not kill him. <laughs> <laughs> this uh, this kind of area reminds me of the filming location that I we scouted and I found for that shitty uh, Lush movie. Because like I literally had to find some person's land and property like that, an old house and old locations, and the lush movie that didn't it ended up happening, but you had nothing to do with the finished version. No, they still yeah. don't really know that story. 
Yeah, uh, I, I'll tell you something though. Riverman found a website. It's like a it's like a really low grade streaming website, and all of his movies are on there to stream. He's got more than one. He did a few. Well, I think he did a couple. Well, I think he directed a couple of shorts, and then he had his hand in a couple of other things, like you know, set help or production, help, whatever. But they're just little short movies of the same caliber. We should do a commentary of it. I thought about it, but it's and like you I, could just tell the story. And we'll much. and we'll have to. Well, the thing here's the thing. Now that it's streaming, at first it's like, what are we gonna do a commentary on it? No one can watch it. Now that it's that looks like a cock and balls that cafe sign, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> but now that it's a there's an actual place we can tell people and direct them to go to watch it with us, we could do it. But at the same time, it would also be giving attention to the movie, and I, I kind of disown it. Oh, yeah. I don't really want to give it any attention. It's not good. Is your name in the credits anywhere? No, he didn't, even though I fucking, even though that fucking final product uh, was basically my script rewrite. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> I don't want yeah. my name on it. I don't want my name on it. Trust me. These shots remind me a lot of that movie, uh, Island of Death. Really? That's on, uh, it's very, like, isolated. Yeah. On a, that's that's a fucking great movie. You want to keep doing it? Let's just fucking do it. Let's stop talking about it already and do Island of Death. That's the one that like we'd have to just be quiet and watch it through the whole movie, though. Really, it's not something we could have. But would it still be entertaining? I've never seen it. Have you know my reactions? Yeah, I don't know. We could always try it, man. Maybe someone like Josh will want to do that one. I really want to do Necro uh, Maniac. Uh, with you, me, and Josh. Uh, how bad is that? You do, don't watch it. Don't want, don't know anything about it going into it. It's fucking hilarious. How bad is it though? The main character makes the whole movie. How bad is it though? Is it it's really be- not bad. There's not like a bunch of gore. It's just fucking hysterical. Okay. Well, then let's do that one. Then is it streaming? <laughs> I have the DVD of it, so I can put it in the box. We'll see if Josh James wants to jump on that one. Why not? We'll do it. Hmm. Necromaniac? Necromaniac. Is or it? No, it's Schizophrenic. Necromaniac is, is the second movie. Okay. Schizophrenic 2. Okay, Schizophrenic. And what year did this come out? Pardon my ignorance. Maybe 2003 or something. Okay. And it, is there. It was shot on Shittio. So it's very low budget. It's like a camcorder, <laughs> but it's so fucking funny. <laughs> It's just like a train wreck. It is just hilarious. Okay. Well, yeah, let's do it, man. Is it kind of uh, notorious? Is it? Is it got a following? Or no? Uh, very small. Okay. Pretty much. Is anybody going to be into this fucking commentary, Zach? <laughs> It'll be... A, if they're not, they just don't know what they're missing, because it's fucking amazing. <laughs> All right, so... Why not, man? Let's see if Josh wants to join. And the, the third movie in the franchise was also... Uh, a fucking sequel to Last House on Dead End Street. Oh wow! They crossed over. Okay, so and James James Van Bever played the Last House on Dead End Street guy. Have you ever seen his Manson movie? Yeah, I have that. I've never seen it. Is it any good? I remember liking it. I've only seen it once. I know. I know. Riverman liked it. The Blu-ray's unavailable now. I think. Yeah. So. Run it by Josh, and we'll do Schizophrenia. I don't mind. It'd be fun. Maybe we can do that Friday. The fucking audience is in for a treat. Ready yet? Get Rega- set. <laughs> regardless, uh, before you even ask him, you can go ahead and rip it and get in the box. I mean, we'll do it regardless. Mm-hmm. Fuck, man. Maybe maybe Riverman will do it. Yeah. So. Okay. Check so he- out my porn I got in my book. Excuse me? Check out my stash. He's this kid's gonna show him his porn. I bet it's dank as fuck. Do you think they're like uh, your friend and the dogs and the truck? You think they like have to fuck each other? Maybe. You know, it's the it kind of your friend. And I think I just figured out what's wrong with him. Was he a follower of He Who Walks Behind the Rose? Was he one of the children of the corn? And he's all he was a big egg? fan of this movie. Oh my god! Series. He probably had weird... He probably wrote from some fucked up fanfic. His favorite was part two. He wrote some weird fucked up fan fiction, didn't he? I don't know. Like him and his sister were children of the corn <laughs> and they had to get rid of their parents and so they could just do it all the time. Mm-hmm. We got your woman. 
We missed that line. You ever? Yeah. Have you ever watched um, the basically planes, trains, and automobiles remake uh, with Robert Downey Jr.? What is it called? Um, what's that movie called? Zach Galifianakis. I don't. I haven't seen it. Due date. Okay. Oh. It's basically it's the exact same story as Plane, Trains, and Automobiles, but uh, there's a scene where they're sleeping in their car, and then Robert Downey Jr. is because they have to drive cross country. Robert Downey Jr. is sleeping, and then he hears like a fapping sound. And he looks over, and the guy's dog is in the back seat beating off to him. <laughs> and it's really, and I always, and now I picture that's like the ultimate kink for your friend. It's like him fucking his sister while his dog watches and fucking beats <laughs> off. It's like a voyeuristic fucking bestiality thing, incest. That, how could that would be hot? You can't deny that would be hot. Weird combo. <laughs> yeah, that guy's a grown ass man. How come he ain't dead yet, dude? That kid, that guy's older than eighteen. They probably figured he's the best actor in a movie, so we can't let him die. He doesn't have a single line. Oh, I thought you were talking about uh, Malachi. No, the guy next to him with the fucking Lloyd Christmas haircut, the big old man. He's uh, he's one of those retarded kids that looks older. <laughs> what? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> the guys that were the big dumb oafs, they were like the uh, henchmen to the bully. You know, they were like the big dumb idiots. And they looked like they had like five. They always had five o'clock shadow in the fifth grade. <laughs> it's like, you know what I mean? Those, those the grunts. It's so funny because it's like they, they exchanged. Oh, this is the scene. We didn't miss it. We have your woman. We have your woman. <laughs> <laughs> What's with the, the rope around her head? How come she doesn't run away? She doesn't really seem to have much of a grip on her. Oh, he's holding her hair, I guess. Yeah. Oh, I thought he had a, a rope tied around her forehead and he was holding the rope. Dude, he's he's grinding on that ass. <laughs> he was. It was tapping. She's yelling right in her fucking ear, too. I know. That pissed me off. She's like, this fucking kid's taking this shit too seriously. We need, to, we need to get this guy on the podcast, man. We've mentioned him enough. He even made a special cameo mention when we were talking about uh, the the ginger disorder <laughs> like, you know we were trying to discuss it was it a chromosomal thing <laughs> what we could ask him personally how many chromosomes are you missing sir he's like I ain't missing no chromosomes motherfucker that little girl kind of reminds me of Melissa Lefever. that's a cool last name I don't know who that is from Angus, baby. Oh, oh, all you know, younger, and also in uh, the first Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, yeah. She had a long giraffe neck. Did she? I don't remember. Yeah, I remember like watching Angus, and I'm like, you watch him and her together at the dance or whatever, and she's got a really long neck, not nearly as long a neck as the girl that asks where the bathroom is in Heavyweights. <sighs> You know that girl where they come up to him at the dance and like, oh, she's coming here. She's coming to us. Dude, she's got oh, yeah. a fucking long ass neck. Daddy long neck. It's really crazy. Apparently that's considered attractive on women, a long neck. Yeah. That is- when, when they Photoshop models, they always make their neck longer. Yeah, it's too long, though. Wait, so why are they burning him again? Uh, he, they, he, I think, uh, Malachi just decided he's taken over. Okay. So how did he convince them all that he was, uh, you know, a heretic or something to get him to go along with burning him and sacrificing him? Yeah, I don't remember. I think he just said, you are following his rules. You follow not. <laughs> What happens when Malachi turns 18, like, any day now? Well, uh, uh, although supposedly Isaac is a teenager, actor John Franklin was 24 years old at the point of the movie when he played Isaac. Yeah. And then so in, that- in in part 666, he's like, he. it's so funny because he gets away, he pulls it off at 24 being a kid, but in part 666, when he comes back, he clearly looks like a weird 50-year-old that has, like, a shrunken boy face. But he's got saggy, you know, gray hair and saggy fucking jowls and shit. Yeah. It's weird. It, it, those types of people, it, it really shows when they get older. You're like a hybrid. And the original ending of the story, Linda Hamilton's character, Vicky, was killed by the children. She joined the blue man on a cross and had her eyes cut out. That's a good ending. Why is everybody against that? the unhappy endings and non-perfect endings? I don't know. You know, it doesn't always have to be 
happily ever after because I think they just drive off and they get away. You know, they probably take those kids with them. The two little, you know, the Lefevre looking kid and the boy. Mm hmm. I mean, that's just kind of, and then they they sell them into a sex slave trade. Or does the dad? Or does the guy die? Or do they all survive? You'll see. I, I dude, I've seen this movie a lot. I just, I'm, I'm having trouble. We should have done Bill and Ted too, because Bill and Ted Day is coming up. Sixty nine dudes. Oh yeah. Well, sixty nine was yesterday. Oh, was it? Fuck. <laughs> yeah. We still do it. We've been talking about doing Bill and Ted for the longest time. I'd like to do Bill and Ted in the butt. <laughs> Which one would you get first? Until they nut. Oh, gross. Okay, so this They'd is like... it have to be Keanu first. Listen, this is like asking who your favorite parent is. I get it. It's hard to decide. But you're in a three-way with Bill and Ted, and you can only nut inside one of them. Which one do you nut inside? <laughs> the Reeves, baby. The Reeves. Because that's a better story, right? Like, I nutted in Keanu Reeves. Because <laughs> if you're, like, at a party, hey, I nutted... people know who you're talking about. Yeah, it's about. like, hey, I nutted in Alex Winter. Then you're just a right they're like, like who the fuck is that they're like, oh the guy that made that documentary about napster but <laughs> and he was on bill and ted but you're like you're like hey i i i shot a i shot a fucking cum load inside neo it's like ah, oh, it's a good story bro and he fucking dodged it like he did in the matrix <laughs> <laughs> no that would be you shooting a nut at him not in <laughs> like like it's going for his face <laughs> no, no, no! Because ha- he's got to be in on this. You don't want it to be because that sounds like he doesn't want a part of it. And you, we don't want we, we don't want to be forcing sex on anybody because that's horrible. So what if like your aim was just bad and he was trying to catch it, <laughs> and he got out of the way and he got it, like whatever you throw an M M&M and M up in the air and try to catch it in your mouth. It's fucking predator effects. Yeah, so weird. See. Things like this can show up at the end out of nowhere and can and completely take you out of a movie. Because <laughs> it's like that wasn't needed, you know what I mean. In the third one, isn't don't they actually have like an embodiment? Like it comes, like the corn's alive, but isn't there like a fucking thing, like a monster? There's like bugs. There's something with bugs. It's like it's monster or something. Yeah, like beetles or something show up at the end. We should do that one, man. I just I don't know why. It's like I I remember liking it when I was a kid. It was just one of those random horror movies you rented at the rental store. And you mm-hmm. liked it because it was it was what it was an R rated movie that might have had boobs in it, which I don't remember if it did or not. I don't think so. There was like uh, in part two, there's like a dude playing a Native American guy, and he's like the worst actor in a movie. It's pretty fun. Is the guy playing the Native American actually Native American? Uh, if I remember right, good. I don't remember though. They should have got Danny from uh, Hey Dude. <laughs> The, the Indian from that show. Hey, dude. Man, it's too bad. Uh, uh, as far as like the Vegas thing, it's too bad you guys aren't coming here. We could go visit the Hey Dude Ranch. It still exists. It's like uh, it's abandoned. It's like on a mountain trail somewhere. Really? Yeah, and they still have like Mr. Ernst's office and all the buildings and the bunkhouses. You know what's funny, too, is I remember that theme song, but I never watched the show. It's a little wild, it's a little strange. Yippee ki yi yippee ki yi What like the cowboy say? Yeah. It's a catchy tune, man. He's bitch slapping that kid. He's going to go to jail. That's so funny. Look at him. He's like not really slapping him. Yeah. He's wrestling slapping him. He really is bitch slapping. He's like he's like front front hand backhand front hand backhand. He's the, he's that fucking little kid's pimp. Uh oh. Oh, right by his dick. No. You fucker! You missed. <laughs> I love this. I don't. I don't understand. So they respect him for winning the fight now? Is that their rules? Oh, oh that yeah. just... I remember this. That just made me, like, fucking start headbanging for no reason. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! I got a date with your mothers. <laughs> he wants you to come. What if he just started, like, ferociously sucking all their cocks? <laughs> for come for the, for the he who walks behind the roads. I forgot about this part, man. This is awesome. I said roads. Yeah. Row ads. <laughs> That's a hooker, man. He who yeah. walks beside the road. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
or a fucking uh, hitchhiker. Yeah, I guess. Which are also prostitutes. I mean, they suck dick for a car ride sometimes. They need to legalize prostitution so I can make an honest living. <laughs> an honest living? Yeah, I mean, I guess if you're not hiding and you're telling everybody what you do, it's an honest living, right? Hell yeah. Isn't that the definition of an honest living? <laughs> if you're not, they, they make at least fucking how much an hour just for a, just just for a shot in the mouth. That's not bad. It depends on your marketability and what you look like and how used up you are and I guess where you're at. Mm-hmm. You know, locations, everything. I mean, a shot to the mouth, maybe twenty bucks. Would you take a shot to the mouth? Hell yeah. No. Oh yeah, it's disgusting. Not. It's fucking gross. Only, oh. only if they'd be okay with me gagging and throwing up, probably. Have you ever shot in your own face by accident? <laughs> I think one time it hit my chin. <laughs> or something like that. I was laying on my back, jacking <laughs> off, and I just felt something wet hit my chin, and I was like, ugh! I have a friend that said that he was, like, he was getting jacked off, and he was really into it. He's like, oh, yeah! And, like, he's, he's, he's opening his mouth, and it just lands in his mouth. Oh! And he starts spitting it out. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> I guess it happens, you know. It's like, whatever, what are you going to do? <laughs> oh, no, no, I, I asked because... It did. Yeah, I fucking like, it was just... It, I, I'm not going to describe the situation. Do it! No, I'm not going to describe do it. Do it, fucker! Here's the thing. So, like, your friend, he was with somebody, and in the heat of things... You don't really, you kind of, you're kind of, he was probably just letting the girl kind of do his thing, do her thing. And, you know, <laughs> he, he just kind of in the moment, he's not in control necessarily so much. So I could see how it could kind of come as a surprise and just happen. It'd be funny if she actually aimed it towards his face. <laughs> he didn't realize not to it. Mention, not to mention, uh, I can imagine like if you're a guy, you kind of have an idea of how like large of a fucking nut you usually shoot. <laughs> Like like an average meter, nut meter. <laughs> like what if it's like what if he was like super surprised that time and it like really just exploded? It's like wow, and it actually sh- it shot a whole foot, you know, than it normally does. Long, I don't know. Look at me trying to like protect this guy. It was one of those times when you filled the cup. I can't believe we were talking about this. I'll we'll say it's over. You, you ever see that movie Senseless? Yeah, with uh, Marlon Wayans and David Spade. Remember how he he kept going to the sport, uh, the sperm bank and like. Like uh, he, he kept acting like he was different people to try to get more money, and like I like later on in the movie he comes to the same sperm bank and he goes, "Excuse me, how much would I get for filling this?" And he pulls out <laughs> one of those water cooler <laughs> bottles. <laughs> it's fucking funny. <laughs> Imagine how long that would take. Uh, it wouldn't take a horse very long. I'd just go to a fucking barn and jerk one of them off and take it in. Well, they wouldn't let you sell them that. Well, how do they know, man? It all looks like fucking cum, right? I'm sure they do tests on it. <laughs> like, this sperm... <laughs> I don't know. Like, w- would the sperm look different? I don't know. This this sperm has really giant human-like teeth. <laughs> like a horse. Speaking of... Like, if they fucked... Like, you gave them horse semen, Jeez. and they they put they gave it to somebody, and they give birth to BoJack Horseman. Oh, my. I've been watching that. Yeah, I, I remember, I watched the first season when it came out, and I really didn't like it. But some people really like it, so maybe it got better. I don't know. I'm enjoying it. I thought the worst episode in the series was the first episode. I thought it got better after the first episode. Maybe, maybe I kind of halfway checked out after the first episode and didn't really, you know, invest too much in the rest that I watched, but mm-hmm. could be. Okay, so is he going to get killed? Is he going to cut himself free? I can't remember. Yeah. He's going to get fucked by the corn like in uh, Evil Dead. Evil Dead. That's where the term cornhole came from, was this movie. Isn't cornhole the mouth, though, or is that like an asshole? I don't really know. Oh, I, th- I always thought cornhole was getting fucked in the ass. Getting cornholed? Yeah, yeah. I think it was. I think it is. Yeah, it wins- yeah, cornhole somebody. Yeah. I think that's what it is. And, uh,. Then why is there that, you know, that game bags where you throw the sandbags in the hole? It's called cornhole. <laughs> yeah. I don't That's, know. I always laugh. It's really big around here. You go to the bars and stuff and um, they, they always have like cornhole set up and you can play cornhole with your friends. I've never heard it. 
If I was going to play cornhole with my friends, we'd be naked, covered in KY jelly. <laughs> uh, I can't believe we fucking went down that road when we're talking about that, man. That <laughs> What, okay. coming in your face? <laughs> <laughs> or, the, or the cornhole one? I can't, I meant, we, yeah. we talked about two different ones there. No, I meant the former. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Jeez Louise, man. Have you seen that movie, The Quiet Place? This movie has a setting that's like it. Like, you know, like farming fields and... Is that that new movie? Yeah, with John Krasinski. I haven't yet. It's it's worth a watch. It's not perfect, but it's it's a it's an interesting, fun idea. Mm-hmm. Hey, something! What the hell is that? Why can't it just look like smoke? They put an effect on it. So, is he just spraying, like, pesticides? Yeah, he's gonna kill the corn. Kill the corn, baby. Kill it. See, that's gonna... A lot of people are gonna go hungry now. Does it really work that fast, though? I don't know, yeah. I would I would think it would take... I don't know. Oh, he's gonna burn it, too. That's right. Ah, mm. I can't throw for shit. If this was me in this movie and, and, and it all relied on me throwing that and making it, I wouldn't have made it. Oh, I never learned how to throw a football. I never gave a shit. Look at that blanket effect. It's like something under a blanket. It was tremors. Yeah, it is tremors. It's a cool effect, though. You see somebody's shadow running along it. Probably like whoever was controlling the effect. See, we never see what this is, I don't think. <laughs> There's the bottle! Look at the corn, it's like animated too. I would have thrown it the same way that time and fucked up. Yeah, what if he would have fucked up again? And they just die, it's over. Dude, that would be scary, man, having to run out of that cornfield because it would spread like fast, I think. This is probably where they use styrofoam corn, having to run through a cornfield would be pretty painful. Yeah. Reynolds! I wonder if Linda Hamilton denounces this movie, like all the actresses do when they do horror. Oh, we can see some nip! We can see some nip! I'll, sh I'll show you half a nip, and that's it. They had dynamite stored in that shed. Serious? No, I'm just wondering why it blew up. It's like a fucking mushroom cloud. That's that's insane. Come on, come on, let's go. Yeah, why they, why does everybody stay and watch for a second? Oh no, it's like evil tunes, man. Does this look like evil tunes shit? Evil tunes. It's got a face in the cloud. Oh, faced. Yeah, that's what evil tunes looks like. That weird like a face. Look, they're really running, aren't they? Mm -hmm. They're not running. Look at this. They're like barely jogging. Are we doing another thing after this? Another movie? I don't think so, man. Oh, I thought you said we were going to do this and uh, um, Retro Rampage. I said if we did a Retro Rampage, we could do like a, a mini one or, oh. or a full movie. Because our Retro Rampages tend to be an hour. Mm -hmm. So now they're going to take these kids back to their car and fuck them. I hope not. What if that was the twist ending? You found out they were pedophiles. That would be an interesting twist, though. Not that, per se, but like <laughs> the these guys are just drifters, right? They were just passerbyers that kind of got roped into this whole ordeal. What if mm -hmm. like the reason they were driving on that road, maybe they were like a Bonnie and Clyde type, you know, thing and they weren't good guys or we're something. Getting chased by the law. That'd be funny. That'd be interesting. Mm -hmm. Would that be a real, that would be a serious twist. Like, they're in the car, they're driving away, oh, happy ending, and then you hear on the radio, local pedophile on the loose, and they're describing him, and the kids are just looking at him, Don't, and it cuts to black. They were better off staying with the killing kids, motherfucker. <laughs> Jeez. That'd be a dark way to end a movie, it sounds like something I'd do. I, you know what, to be honest with you? 
wouldn't you be a little scared to bring those kids back home? I, I know they seem like the normal ones of the of the lot, but you don't know if they're tainted. They're decoys. Yeah, it was a trap. Joan of Arc's in her back seat. Is she in the sequel at all? No, I think she dies here. Oh. Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> Like this is kind of like the the music that used to be in the old God of War uh, games. Too. Yeah, mm-hmm. like there was one that went Zidos, Zidos. I remember every time like me and Mac would play it, he he'd sing like Jesus, Zeus, Lemon Juice. What it what God? <laughs> he just say like he just say like words that like God and stuff. What an ending! I don't understand why is their car. They never got gas for their car or whatever. They were like, fuck that. We'll just walk. Yeah, I mean, like... There could be another little kid in the backseat. I'd rather not look. Why would you want to walk? Yeah, there could be other kids around. Just drag that fucking little chick out of that car. They didn't get the memo that they're not killing the adults anymore. Maybe someone was sick for that little get-together. So what happens in the second one? Is there like a whole new batch of kids in another farm community? Yep. Is that really what it is? Mm-hmm. Where does it take place? I think it's the same town, actually. Really? It's all different kids, though. They didn't get anybody to come back. But they're all dead anyway. There were some that survived. Oh, and they just walked they just away, walked right? walked off, yeah. Oh, that's right. They all walked off. So, I wonder what those guys did once they got back to civilization. Do they call the cops and be like, hey, there's a whole bunch of kids in a town with no adults? They just forgot about it. They figured, what the fuck? You know, I mean, because... If they just send a bunch of cops over there, the, the story doesn't make sense because all those adults shouldn't be living there anyway. Mm-hmm. I don't see how this would ever even be a thing. It's a, it's a way to get the movie done. I miss the era of the 70s and 80s where to have a creepy film theme, you had to have like a kid choir. Mm-hmm. It's just not done anymore. Exactly. And they don't do it enough. They never did it enough. What do you think is the most iconic I think it's Amityville Horror is the one I always think about, the first one. That one is probably, yeah, because that, that one's creepy. So, hey, let me, uh, I promised it earlier, let me read some comments here, and I'll read the one that we were talking about. The naysayers. Um, let's see. Oh, I'll, I'll read a comment that we got when we posted the Halloween reaction. Um, listener known as Draven G, he had said, uh, I think he was kind of giving us some information because we maybe were asking questions in the trailer. He says, well, we know the redhead guy is making a documentary on Michael, and I imagine the reason he holds up the mask is to try and get Michael to react. I think that's why the girl has a tape recorder going. I don't think Michael is going to react, though. Um, Did I send you that picture of uh, Don May Jr., the guy that does Synapse Films? He, uh, he, he posted that picture of the guy holding the mask, and he said, it looks like a fucking mask of uh, the Walking Dead guy, Norman Reedus. I can't unsee it. I, it's funny because it does. It, it looks like his face. I'll have to. I'll have to freeze frame it. Um, and I the, the the thing about that trailer I caught afterwards is I hate how in the trailer they give away, like they show Michael slamming the redhead's guy into the door. That's his teeth, right? They show oh, yeah. they show him drop the teeth, and then you see in the next frame you see the shower stall from the viewpoint of the girl in there. Sorry, the bathroom stall, and you see like Michael's white hair. Like peak, just barely peeking over the stall, which tells me it's early in the movie. And then immediately after, it's so quick you can't even tell. Like everybody in the comments is like, "Oh, Michael's headbutting the door open." That savage. I'm like, "No, look closely. He's slamming the redhead's head into the door," which tells me that's early in the movie when he breaks out. Um, and he that'd gets be great it. if they made a movie where where he was just going around headbutting people. But anyway, he gets his mask from him, so it's like it sounds like that guy probably dies pretty early. Mm-hmm. You know. So I don't know. He, I don't think he's a Loomis type character at all. Last Easter, we were like, my niece was looking for eggs. There were the little plastic ones that you had to like, you know, pry open the little like plastic eggs. Uh huh. There was shit in them, and like one of them, she was having trouble opening. I'm like, hit it, and I meant like hit it on like the table, and she just smashes it into her head real, real fast. <laughs> and starts laughing. That's it's pretty funny. funny. Okay, so we uh, on our Are You Afraid of the Dark? commentary for laughing in the dark this is where we got that <laughs> comment um from marvin dale no sorry marvin dave 
So I don't know if his name's Marvin Dave with the I omitted or if he's Marvin. Marvin, you know your cousin Marvin Dave. <laughs> he says, you guys pick the best shows slash movies. Oh, starts off as a good compliment. Then, but the problem is you never talk about what you're watching. It might as well be a regular podcast. We kind of already explained that earlier. Uh, that's, thank- that's the whole point, baby. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to be like everybody else. We kind of have to do our own thing and we kind of have to. Having that element of flying by the seat of our pants and being spontaneous, like the shit that we were just talking about like 10 minutes ago that I regret talking about, that would never happen on a Mystery Science 3. If we were just sitting there talking about the movie. Yeah, no, exactly. Um, We tend to get pretty loose. Um, uh, Anyway, Mark and Dave, thank you so much for listening and commenting. We appreciate it. Hopefully you come back for more, um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, Misfit Danzig commented. Fucking Danzig listens to the show. <laughs> yeah, Misfit, Misfit Danzig. Um, they they commented on uh, the Scout Taylor Compton interview um, where she was talking about Halloween 3 at the time. Guess that ain't happening. Ha, 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 he says. If this was a porn con, every, everyone well put their Bible and judge, but since it's a horror con, it is okay. This guy's speaking broken English. Let me read it again. Ha, 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 ha. If this was a porn con, exclamation mark. Everyone well put the Bible and judge, but since it's a horror con, it a okay. I don't even know what he's fucking talking about. I don't is think he dogging you guys for going to a horror convention. Like you guys are so fucking nerdy. I, I think he's talking about just in general people like uh, throw shade at the horror convention types. But I don't understand. We didn't even talk about this during the interview, so I don't know really what he's talking about. But regardless, Misfit Danzig, thank you uh, for listening and commenting. Um, Adrian Mendoza, he commented on, uh, the laughing in the dark again. He says, um, hold on. He's got a couple things here. I love that you guys are comparing Burke defects to being red haired, (laughs) redheaded. Please watch this music video by MIA that deals with ginger oppression. I actually did watch it. Um, I still, I still couldn't tell if it was quite. Were they oppressed? (laughs) Well, they were being oppressed by us, weren't they? Uh, check oh, out this. I, I thought I thought like real. I was like, oh, they used to not get served in, in like stores and shit. <laughs> they at most they just kind of get like made fun of and ribbed in school. I don't really not like. Uh, yeah, I, I don't. <laughs> I'm just joking. I fucking hate them. No, no. I'm kidding. But it's funny because the first time you ever hear heard the word ginger was from South Park. And then it just became common, like... Was it the first time in South Park? That's the first time I ever heard it. But, I mean, before South Park, people were calling redhead kids and fire crotch and stuff, you know? Stuff yeah, like that's that. that's fine. I got the fire extinguisher crotch. But these were all people that were friends. It was just kind of like a ribbing thing. It was never mm-hmm. like a, oh, we hate you. Uh, but anyway, so, yeah, he posted that video, this MIA video. He posted the Vimeo link to it. I watched it. I guess it was satirical, but I couldn't quite tell. Um, check out this review of the series. Are you afraid of the dark? I think you both will like it. And he sent a link, uh, for a review link. I haven't watched that yet. I, I I'll check it out though, for sure. Thank you. But yeah. So Adrian also goes on to comment the great Celestine, uh, who was on, who was one of Howard's whack packers. He's referencing when we were talking about the, when I was talking about the, the woman with no arms, no legs, you remember? Sweet. And yeah. he says, then he de- then he really depressed me. He said two cars hit her when she was crossing the street on her motorized gurney. <laughs> Celestine looked a bit like Biz Marquis, <laughs> which made me laugh because she did. Uh, here is a video of Celestine, and uh, I commented, "Whoa, she died! I had no idea. That's horrible." And I felt really horrible about. And I said, "I feel really horrible about even thinking about the Biz Marquis reference." Um, Biz Marquis was dank as fuck. <laughs> I said, but I said maybe a close second would have been Big Worm. That's awful to hear about, though. Um, Big Perm. Yeah, and I, I, I never knew what happened to her after the Howard Stern appearances. So uh, let's see what else we got here. What if it was? What, what if it was a disgruntled Howard Stern employee that that ran her over? Mm. He's like, I was supposed to be on that show. You took my time, bitch. I'm <laughs> cutting that out. No, you just stop. Um, it's probably been, I don't know. Anyway, uh, Sleepaway Camp 3, the commentary for that, Teenage Wasteland, Seen Missing Films commented, 
Why is Corey Feldman such a prominent point of this commentary? <laughs> so stupid. It'd be nice to talk about the movie. Well, fuck you, seeing missing <laughs> films. No, that's a great comment. That's the kind of comment that I don't see as a negative comment. That's just a great comment. No, it's a great comment. I'm just kidding. Uh, Corey <laughs> Feldman's the man, though. Clearly, you have taste issues. He's really not, but <laughs> that's why. <laughs> No, uh, we we appreciate you listening, and we appreciate the comment. Seen missing films. I wonder if uh, he's got a channel of, of you know his own. Um, mm-hmm. Kind of want to look into it. But anyway, thank you, Corey Feldman. I have a feeling we'll continue to come up. I we can't help it. We don't really think about it. Sometimes he just comes up. That's just how he is. Um, he's like a, an unwanted boner. Let's see here. Uh, oh. Liberals are traitors, who's been a regular listener as of late. He commented on Are You Afraid of the Dark? The Tale of the Laughing in the Dark. He says, I always wondered if Ginger's drapes match the carpet. Uh, Age old question, my friend. They do. Adrian Mendoza actually responded to him. And he says, yes, I love the fire crotch. Unless they're not naturally redheaded. Yeah. Unless they dye both regions. It's It's a different type of redhead. Like when you dye it, nobody dyes it like that ginger orange. That clown mm-hmm. color. But uh, yeah, uh, Adrian Mendoza likes the fire crotch, and he can attest to that. Let's see here. Um, do, 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 do. I tried to dye my hair blonde one time, and it's so dark that it kind of came out like reddish looking, copper looking. Did we read the comments for like Ghost Dad on the last one? No, because we did short episodes. Yeah. Right? So let me go ahead and read a couple there. Uh, Adrian Mendoza, you commented on the Ghost Dad commentary. Thank you. He says, I was hoping Zach would have used Harry Pubes or Buster Hyman, both classics. Um, I love that both of you laughed when the name Jeffrey Jones was read aloud at one, at the one minute mark. You know that he, yeah, it's funny. He he just brings out laughter. I mean, Zach did a great job with this episode. Not me. Thanks. Uh, from the, <laughs> from the hilarious thumbnail to the intro of this episode with a snippet of the Cosby show where Dr. Huggs will spike the BBQ sauce. I actually didn't even make that. That was a, already a video. That was already on YouTube and I'm the one who shared it with Zach. I did all right too. No, but so yeah, that's him that did that. I also now have an image of a big black <laughs> cock in a turkey. Thanks, Zach. <laughs> Sweet. I thought he was going to say in a turtleneck. So it's just an uncircumcised big black cock. We had a uh, uh, re- reader, Bambi Lackner. Uh, I think this, you know, one of the, the few girls we get. You know, most of you guys are dudes. But uh, she commented on Pet Cemetery 2. She says, Walmart has the movie in the $5 bin right now. So if anyone sees this comment around June 3rd, 2018, uh, and wants to buy it, get to your local store. Do they work for Walmart? Are they mad that you prank called them? Uh, or tried to we failed ghost dad commentary gauge thent uh he comments lmao i'm only 32 minutes in but i had to comment on that prank call fucking hilarious i fucking love this channel thank you that guy babied us he made it too easy and then after that i got too cocky and thought they were all gonna be that great yeah well we're gonna adjust how we do things in the future we need to call them back whenever we finally do the shining commentary Oh, yeah, you're right. Um, anyway, thank you, Gage Stent. You've been a regular listener for a little while now, and thank you so much for commenting. And the, the comment was really nice, too. Ga- uh, Zach owes you a blowjob. Um, one blowy. So, also, oh, Gamer Guy Reviews comments on the same uh, video, Ghost Dad. This commentary was a riot. If y'all had called the Motel 6 in my hometown of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, that would have been glorious. P.S. You guys rock. Keep it up. Thank you, uh, Gamer Guys Reviews. Nice. Um, choo, 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 choo. Oh, no. <laughs> um, g- uh, liberals or traitors commented on that video. He says, Carl Winslow is now America's favorite black dad, uh, which is a good comment, but he was always my favorite black dad, even even before all this stuff. What if something comes out about him now? You jinxed him. <laughs> what is this? Is this a... Hold on. Is this a, this must be a quote from the movie Biodome, or maybe you said it on the commentary. I can't remember. Somebody by the name of Aaron Lamishka, uh, commented on the Biodome commentary. Suck your mom's dick, you cocksuckers. LOL. <laughs> that sounds like something I, Max I said. Say. Maybe yeah. Max said it. I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying to go through as much of these because I don't think I've read them in a couple of times. Did we read the comments on the uh, long distance call? 
I don't think so. Okay, Adrian Mendoza. Let's see what you got for us here. I'm loving all the anthology shows you guys are doing. The Midnight Sun is a good episode of the Twilight Zone series. It's season three, episode 10. And I told him we'll do that one next. Thanks for the recommendation. So jot that down. We got to do Midnight Sun, okay? Not next. Well, just in case, the I still got one that we already did that hasn't come out yet. So, Oh, yeah, my mistake. Yeah, so we have another one that's already in the can, but after well, that the one. The next one we record. Yeah. We will do Midnight Sun next. Um, Midnight Sun, won't you come? <laughs> and then he says, uh, this will be the last one I read. Uh, Adrian Mendoza also says, I love that you guys remembered where I work. Everything you said about DFW airport is true, Aaron. That airport is a real ball ache. I would freak out if I saw you or Zach. Well, we'll see if we fly through it sometime. I tend to I tend to fly through DFW all the time uh, when I travel. Zach's never been on a plane as of yet, so mm-hmm. we'll see. I doubt I doubt you would uh, hit DFW <laughs> going to Vegas if that's where we end up going. But anyway, thank you guys all for the comments. We appreciate that. We're going to try our best to read all as much as we can. Uh, every episode and as usual to close it out if you guys are watching on youtube thank you make sure you guys are subscribing sharing with your friends uh and after you click subscribe if you aren't already subscribed make sure you click the stupid little bell and make that bell let you know every time a video is released and uh also in the in the description click on the itunes link and please head over there and leave us a five-star review and a little feedback a little nice little uh, not just the five star rating, but a nice little review of a couple of words. That stuff goes a long way. It helps us, you know, up go up in the ranks with iTunes. Uh, and while you're there, subscribe to us, obviously, and check us out over there because the episodes tend to be a little bit more robust on iTunes, and they're not as uh, handicapped. You know, they're bustier. They got bigger, fatter tits. Yeah, we can get away with a lot more over there, and we can do a little bit more and take more liberties with the editing and stuff, which is a lot more fun. And they tend to go up a little earlier too. And uh, but for all you Google folks, we are on Google Play as well. Or you know, if you guys like Google, uh, Stitcher, you can download that from i uh, the Apple Store. The and I can't fucking talk the Google Play Store and the iTunes Store Stitcher. So we're pretty much anywhere. Um, you know, whatever your poison is, you can find us. Uh, that's all we got, man. Zach, you got any final words here? Uh, you- suck your mom's dick, you cocksuckers. <laughs> you got a new Mac and Zach, right? Yeah, that one came out. We we got another one coming out. Probably we're gonna wait like, maybe a, a week or so to put that one out. And I think we pitched on the last one, but you got uh, on the Mike Myers the Halloween theme, but it's a scary movie, right? Mm-hmm. And you got Mac and Blackface, you motherfucker. Digital Blackface. It's not as bad. Jeez, that's probably just as bad. I was against doing it though. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> Now you're making me want to take it off. First negative comment Zach gets, he can always remove it. Um, it's I don't know, but <laughs> I don't I was know. Kind of hoping nobody noticed. I uh, yeah, I didn't really notice either. I don't think people will notice unless you're watching YouTube on your TV on your big seventy inch TV and you really get a nice blown up image of the thumbnail. You know, and even then they might think Max Black. They might. They, how do they know, right? And actually, he is black, and I'm just whitening his skin for the other episodes. That's racist. <laughs> Jeez. Anyway, uh, thank you guys all for listening. We'll catch you next time. Bye-bye, puppets. Adios.